Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom. I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman. A quick update from me and then to your questions. Please put them in the chat of this Zoom and we will answer all of them this Monday, the 26th of August, day 325 of the October 7th war. To start with, sad news of our fallen soldiers. Uh, IDF casualties since the start of the war have unfortunately risen to 702. Sergeant Ori Ashkenazi Nehemia was 19 years old from Ashkelon. He was killed in southern Gaza. Sergeant First Class in the Reserves Eviatar Atuar was aged 24 and from Russia Ayin. He was killed in battle in the center of Gaza. Sergeant First Class in the Reserves Danil Pechenyuk was 26 years old and from Batyam. He was a lone soldier that left his family to serve in our armed forces to defend this country. He was killed in battle in the center of Gaza. Sergeant First Class in the Reserves Nitai Metodi was 23 years old and from Ashkelon. He fell in battle in, center, in the center of Gaza. Sergeant Major in the Reserves Yaniv Yitzhak Oren was 35 years old and from Ein Gedi. He fell in battle in the center of Gaza. Sergeant, First Sergeant Amit Sadikov was 20 years old from Bet Dagan. He was killed in battle in southern Gaza. First Sergeant David Moshe Ben Shitrit was 21 years old and from Geva Ben Yamin. He fell at sea in the north defending Israel from Hezbollah. Master Sergeant in the reserves Shloma Yonatan Chazut was 36 years old and from Ashdod he fell in battle in the center of Gaza. There are no words of mine that can assuage the pain of their parents and their families. We embrace them and those dear families who have lost their precious heroes, sons and daughters in this war for our very existence. This war has exacted a heavy price from all of us, but none more than the families of our soldiers and especially our fallen soldiers. But as the Prime Minister has said, I promise you, with unity, determination and faith in the justice of our cause, we will fight and with God's help, we will win. May the memories be a blessing forever. Next, regarding the preemptive strike on Hezbollah rockets and drones that saved the lives of many here in Israel and prevented a dramatic escalation, the Prime Minister said that what happened yesterday is not the end of the story. The IDF destroyed thousands of short-range rockets, all of which were designed to attack our people and our forces in the Galilee with drones aimed at the center of this country. For Hezbollah, this was a crushing blow. Three weeks ago, we eliminated its chief of staff, and yesterday, we thwarted its attack plan. The Prime Minister said that Nasrallah in Beirut and Khamenei in Tehran need to know that this is an additional step in changing the situation in the north and returning our residents securely to their homes. The Prime Minister reiterated this is not the end of the story. Now an update from COGAT and their work coordinating aid into Gaza. Firstly, I would point you to COGAT's X-Feed with video of bustling markets in Deir el-Bala, laden with fresh and all kinds of foods. In addition, yesterday, in coordination uh, with the World Health Organization and UNICEF, but not with UNRWA, who are unfortunately a front for Hamas. And as part of the humanitarian efforts, Israel delivered 1,255,000 polio vaccines to Gaza. In the coming days, international and local medical teams will vaccinate children who have not yet been vaccinated against polio at various locations in Gaza. 
The vaccination campaign in Gaza will be led by the World Health Organization and UNICEF, but will be coordinated with the IDF through COGAT as part of the routine humanitarian pauses that will allow the population uh, to reach the medical centers where the vaccinations will be administered. Since the beginning of this war, more than 47,000 trucks have delivered more than 921,000 tons. That's 921,000 tons of humanitarian aid into Gaza. That's 80% more food compared to prior to October the 7th. So that's the end of our briefing today. We'll now take your questions, which you to put in the chat uh, with your news outlet. Thank you very much. Uh, first question I can see here is from uh, Joel Pollack at Breitbart News. Iran says uh, Iranian deterrence, uh, sorry, uh, let me start that again. A question from Joel Pollack at Breitbart News. Iran says Israeli deterrence no longer exists. Perhaps that's an exaggeration, yet Israelis can no longer live in the far north of the country. Some critics uh, say that rather than uh, Israel having a security zone in Lebanon, Iran and Hezbollah have a security zone in northern Israel. Are they right? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Joel. Uh, just a moment ago in my, my briefing, I shared with you the Prime Minister's comments regarding our actions to defend ourselves and to uh, return our uh, 62,500 residents to their homes in the north. And I made clear, as the Prime Minister uh, did, that this is not the end of the story. This is not the end of the story. Uh, Lebanon and Hezbollah terror organizations, which uh, operate at the guidance of Iran, they are responsible for the escalation of the security situation uh, in our north. It's in violation of international law and UN Security Council resolutions 1559 and 1701. Now, as our foreign minister, uh, Yisrael Katz, said last week, the uh, Iranian proxy Hezbollah is leading Lebanon into darkness, both literally and figuratively. While the people of Lebanon suffer through endless blackouts and a crumbling infrastructure, Hezbollah diverts their resources to ignite the region with violence and terror. The Lebanese people deserve a future of peace and dignity and a Lebanon free from the grip of the terrorists of Hezbollah. They're endangering the Lebanese population. They use Lebanon's civilian infrastructure and its population as a human shield, placing rocket launches and weaponry inside towns in close proximity to homes. The Prime Minister has made absolutely clear that this, this is not the end of our action. We are committed to returning our people uh, to their homes. Israel withdrew precisely to the United Nations demarcated line in our border with Lebanon. There is no territorial uh, uh, issue with, uh, between Lebanon and Israel. And the current situation is not sustainable. I'll repeat that. The current situation is not sustainable. Israel will defend itself and it will do its duty and return its own population to our sovereign, sovereign territory. No one should be in any doubt of that fact. Uh, next question here is from uh, Fred Eger. Um, I think it's uh, Israel says Israeli deterrence no longer exists uh, after Hezbollah barrage. Quote, uh, despite comprehensive support of states like United States, Israel could not predict the time and place of a limited and managed uh, response by the resistance. Israel's loss of deterrence power, uh, unquote, wrote Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Nasser uh, Kanai wrote on X. What is Israel's Prime Minister's Office response to uh, Israel Foreign Ministry spokesman? Uh, thank you for that question, Fred. I think that's practically the identical question uh, to uh, Joel Pollack's question just before this, and to which we gave a comprehensive answer. The current reality is not a sustainable reality. This country will be defended. Our people will return to their homes. Uh, and uh, United Nations Resolutions 1559 and uh, 1701 will be adhered to. Uh, Hezbollah will be pushed one way or another through diplomacy or other means back behind the Litani River. Uh, these grandiose uh, comments 
from the Iranian uh, foreign ministry are, shouldn't really be given any uh, credence uh, because they are, of course, given by uh, an undemocratic regime, a regime that subject, subjugates its own people, uh, a regime whose own people despise their regime. Uh, we know that we're being threatened by Iran uh, on nine fronts now, but we know precisely how to deal with this threat, both in ways which you have seen and in ways which you have not yet seen as well. Uh, next question is from... Hannah Julian at the Jewish Press, the Israeli delegation to Cairo returned after a few hours yesterday with Hamas uh, announcing its rejection of the latest deal uh, reached by negotiators. Uh, in, in inverted commas, lower level working groups reportedly remain to try and work out an agreement. Can you tell us if anyone from the Israeli delegation remained in Cairo and if so, who? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, as has been our uh, way uh, in these briefings, we don't go into uh, too much detail in terms of who we're sending, what the current state of play is regarding these negotiations. Uh, but what I can tell you is that um, these negotiations continue. Uh, we are working towards a form of a framework agreement uh, based upon the principles presented by the US in May in a manner that will enable the return of our hostages while achieving the other goals of this war. It's our duty, it's the duty which the Israeli people mandate this government to do. Um, Israel, of course, appreciates the efforts by the US and the other mediators uh, to dissuade Hamas from its consistent refusal. Uh, it's become obvious now, but very rarely shared, shared in the international media, it is Hamas which always walks away from these negotiations. Every single time, aside from that brief moment uh, in November when we managed to pull a hundred of our people out of their deadly grasp, it is Hamas which constantly walks away from these negotiations. On the Israeli side, we're committed and continue to do everything in our power to bring back all of our 109 hostages who are still cruelly being held in Hamas captivity for 10 months now, 325 days. Women, men, a one-year-old child, for heaven's sake, an 85-year-old man, for heaven's sake, the living and the deceased alike, we will bring them all home. Uh, next question from Hannah Julian. Uh, the government w uh, has pushed the return date for evacuated northern and southern communities to December 31st. Can you tell us more uh, about this? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hannah. I haven't got anything more to share with you uh, about that. Um, I have made very clear in this briefing our view that our action in the north is not the end of our action in the north. We have a duty to defend this country, and that is precisely what this government uh, will do. Uh, 620, uh, 62,500 of our people remain displaced. Uh, I can share with you our latest uh, figures uh, from the north that I've just received before coming here today. That's There have been 8,000 rockets uh, from uh, Hezbollah which have uh, rained down on this country. We've had 300 wounded, 46 people killed, and 180 million square meters burnt. That's 180 million square meters burnt by this uh, Hezbollah fire. This is not a sustainable reality. Uh, Israel should be taken at its word. We will do our duty and we will defend ourselves. Okay, that's the, um, that's the last uh, question, I think, today. So thank you for joining us. We'll have another briefing at 3.30 uh, Jerusalem time tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, please do stay safe and thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dejobnik signing off.